broadly speaking, garden one or two, i.e. the undisplaced hip fractures of the intracapsular type, are fixed with screws. These are called cannulated screws and there's a rhyme which says one, two, screw. However, this is just in principle uh, and it's not necessarily always followed in practice uh, because a lot of it depends on the patient's comorbidities and how well the patient will be able to recover their function in uh, with the cannulated screws because there is a still a risk of developing avascular necrosis although the patients only have gotten one or two i.e. an undisplaced fracture. So some of these patients may end up having next uh, sort of management which is which is that of similar to an intracapsular garden 3 or 4 i.e. a displaced fracture. Now as we know that because the blood supply is very likely to be disrupted and this patient will develop avascular necrosis of the femoral head you need to replace it. If a slightly younger patient uh, has a displaced neck femur fracture especially the younger ones below the age of 55 this is an immediate emergency. I mean, although neck of fractures are an emergency, this is particularly so even more uh, because ideally you want to maintain uh, the native femoral head and so you'd place cannulated screws. All those displaced, you still want to give it a chance to recover because there's still a small uh, chance that the patient may not develop avascular necrosis. So you'll give it a shot by sticking in a few uh, cannulated screws because the other option is actually replacing the joint as we mentioned and having a joint replacement at the age of 55 or younger is not a good option because every prosthesis has a limited life and so you can if you imagine this patient uh, ends up living up to the age of 90 they may end up going through two or three uh, hip replacements if the patient is between the age of 55 to 75 again these are fairly arbitrary numbers but you'd want to actually perform a total hip replacement to replace the entire femoral head as well as the acetabulum. Uh, they can, you can get different versions of this, so metal on metal, uh, which are actually is going is turning out to be not as good as people had thought, and various other versions of uh, proline on metal, etc. But the important thing is these are better in terms of function, longer lasting compared to hemiarthroplasties. Uh, so that's why these are offered to patients who have a much greater level of mobility. You may even perform a total hip replacement on a much older patient than 75. Uh, it's to do with how mobile the patient is and how fit and well uh, the patient is able before the injury itself. Next we go on to extracapsular fractures. As you mentioned earlier on, the extracapsular fractures are including or below the intratrochanteric line. But remember, it's not all the way down the femur. It's up to about five centimeters below uh, the, the less intracanter. Uh, so, for example, a fracture takes place anywhere from here to five centimeters would be considered as an extracapsular fracture. Uh, and that's how... And the management for them is different because you're hoping that the blood supply to the femoral head has not been disrupted due to the nature of the fracture and so most of these fractures are managed using something called a dynamic hip screw. A dynamic hip screw is a screw which is this thing here yeah, sorry excuse me is, th is this screw there and a plate this sort of this plate here and the reason it's called dynamic is it changes as the patient weight bears on the leg and it adjusts according to the patient's weight bearing and load bearing and it gives the patient more optimal fixation of the, of the fracture the other way extra, uh, extra capsular fractures can be fixed is with an intramedullary nail where a nail is placed through here into uh, the femoral shaft and these are done for mainly much more severe fractures of this, of this region but for your purposes dynamic hip screw is definitely the one to remember the important thing with all hip fractures is that these patients uh, with multiple comorbidities the last thing they need is to be bed bound. So the, the amazing thing about hip fracture surgery is that these patients can start weight bearing straight away after the surgery. So they may have had a hemiarthroplasty or a dynamic hip screw placed in yesterday and today uh, the, the physios will get the patient up uh, and start walking them. Yes, it will be limited because of pain but not because of the actual fracture itself. But the idea is that the fracture should have been uh, dealt with.
So in summary, we've talked about today uh, extracapsular, intracapsular fractures and how the management of the two is quite different. Uh, intracapsular fractures, you, the worry is of developing avascular necrosis and as a result you need to take that into account. I hope you enjoyed uh, this podcast on uh, hip fractures and stay tuned for more uh, podcasts that I will be posting later on. Thank you very much.